Good evening and welcome to the Cover One Buffalo Podcast. You are joining your host, Greg Thompson, who tonight is flying solo as my partner in crime, Aaron Quinn, is off in enchanted lands of Maine with his family. So I, I wish Aaron and his family the, the very best in being able to go out there and enjoy some time off before we get back to football. Uh, you're listening to me right now as we're about to tip off with our first football game of the year. I know it's the Pro Football Hall of Fame game. It doesn't really count. There won't be many guys playing in that game that are actually in the NFL this year, but maybe a couple. Um, but football is back, and I love it, and I'm very excited. Um, today is going to be about takeaways from training camp, things that we've seen, and uh, ideas of what the Cover One team has been bringing to you in our coverage throughout training camp and everything that we're trying to share with everyone back and forth. But obviously, that was thrown a little bit off kilter with one tweet. And the, you know our good friend, friend of the show, Joe Marino, um, shared with everyone at the end of training camp practice today that Spencer Brown at the end of practice, Bill's offensive tackle Spencer Brown left the field walking with obvious stiffness and accompanied by several trainers. He looked extremely uncomfortable and could not bend over to pick up his helmet. He has a history of back problems. Um, I will say right afterward to Alex Brasky, who again, shout out to Alex. The the cover one team loves Alex and his work at the Batavia. Um, Just saw Spencer Brown speeding past on his electric bicycle and route to the dining hall. So obviously Seemed to be moving okay then. That's certainly a, a little bit better sign. But it is, you know, it, it is a challenge. And, I mean, we had, you know, Cover One's own, uh, you know, Uber Hansen uh, there saying, hey, Cardinals, you up? Uh, wondering what y'all want for Kelvin Beecham. And even in our Cover One chat was talking about if we could trade a fifth for Kelvin Beecham and then trade David Edwards away for a fifth, we could net out even. Um, so I, I'm going to I'm gonna take a breath. I, I'm not going to let this get too far uh, ahead in that uh, up until that moment of Joe Marino sending this tweet today, we had had really positive updates on Spencer Brown. Um, AJ Sabolsky, you know, who's doing great work over at Buffalo rumblings now um, was at camp and talking about, you know, back to back really good reps in one-on-ones where Spencer Brown was winning against Gregory Rousseau and Leonard Floyd, two, you know, very good defensive ends. Um, we had seen really good movement while I was there with Eric and the rest of the guys. We were talking about how how fluid his footwork uh, looked, how explosive he looked, all the one-on-one time he was getting with Aaron Cromer. Um, so I had legitimately written out notes for tonight's show uh, about in my you know positives and things that I was pleased about with Spencer Brown. So I'm I'm not ready to throw all of that away and to just assume that now you know the the back injury is going to derail the entire season and everything is is going in the toilet. I, I don't I'm not ready to say that. Um we've already talked. You heard Aaron and I when we had Brandon Thorne on who's one of you know the people I respect the most for offensive line discussion that you know Spencer Brown is a, a linchpin to this season and is one of the most important pieces that we know we've brought in Brandon Shell to kind of battle with David Questenberry and You know, Tommy Doyle, we've seen that Questenberry and Doyle were insufficient. They are not starting caliber players. Um, There's been ideas floated around of could Ryan Bates kick out there to compete. But the only player that has the upside to have a a positive impact is Spencer Brown playing up to who has athletic potential. Um, Having a six foot nine player who has back injuries has had us concerned. It's been an area that we were focused on, you know, through the draft, through free agency. Um, you know, Brandon Shell is a an adequate fill in. You know, he's had some decent games. He's played, I think, six plus games or, or ten plus games for six straight years, and has you know is okay. Is he's not good? He's not a good starter. Um, he wouldn't have been a free agent as long as he was if he was a good starter. Um, but he's passable. He's probably an upgrade over David Questenberry and Tommy Doyle. But he's not better than what the potential or a healthy Spencer Brown could be. So right now I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to wait and see what the next reports are, what we hear about with Spencer Brown. Obviously I don't expect him to play in the uh, red and blue scrimmage on Friday night. Um, We'll see. I mean, obviously he did. That would be a huge sign of relief. I don't expect that to be the case, but I'm curious, you know, how quickly do we get back to it when they're back at practice on Sunday and Monday, is he out there? Is he limited? What are the the next updates that come out about that? So we'll listen for uh, press conferences. Uh, right now, I'm going to hope for the best and that everything prior 
to that post-practice tweet from Joe Marino had been very positive. Uh, everyone that I had talked to, all the people that were out there, Chris Trapasso, Joe Marino himself, um, Pat Moran, lots of different people that we knew, all talking about how well Spencer Brown was moving and encouragement about what that could end up being. So I'm not ready to throw all that out the window. Uh, we're still going to kind of remain optimistic on on what he could be, and then we'll deal with it if he's not. And, and I think it could be if that turns out to be the case where he is either significantly limited or we see it's a more severe or significant back injury, we will work through there because that will become the major talking point of where we're at. So um, up until now, we've actually been pretty fortunate. Obviously, we knew the Naheem Hines um, accident pre before training camp started with the the jet ski was very unfortunate. We, other than that, we had actually been, you know, pretty lucky so far from an injury standpoint. This is the first, um, you know, wrinkles we've had thrown at us from an injury standpoint. So we'll we'll monitor further. We'll see where that goes and uh, respond accordingly when we get more information. So right now, uh, radar flags are up. I am certainly concerned about this. He was already uh, a player that I had concern and had an awful lot of. Um, he was a big pivot point in the potential for this season so now if he's not able to play to his physical uh potential and his athletic potential uh that's now going to be a concern so we'll see where that goes i'm not ready to to panic about that yet but we're going to monitor that closely before i get into some of the other updates i want to share a little bit about some of our uh new packages that we have together we've talked about our one pass uh capabilities we have a new uh program updated for this year obviously Everything that you can get, you're able to get access to all of our information, um, our Cover One community, which we're very, very proud of in the Slack channel, and you're able to get in there with really informed people, having good discussions, constant updates. Uh, Eric is dropping little nuggets all there all the time. You know, we're not a, a news-breaking organization, but when we have bits of information and insight, we share it in the Slack channel. We don't try to break news out there because it's not what we do, um, but we do get hints and insights into things and we let people know about things and a lot of times our slack channel members find out about things a day or two before the the big news breaks so um it's something we're very proud of the relationships we've had all the players that come on all the relationships we've built we're able to share our little nuggets in there you get access to all of us to ask us questions to be able to get our responses to things you get the kind of our first uh reaction to most of the things that are there you also get some of the the 101 series that i put together for the salary cap you get some of the glossary uh section the air uh, Eric put together explaining what all those different terms are when you see a you know zone dog blitz or when you have you know what robber coverage is or all the different pieces to go through that you hear thrown around in kind of football jargon now you can know what those things are and be the smart one to be able to tell your friends what those things are um we also have a really cool shirt design again for this year kind of proud of how this one came together excited to be able to send these out with a new decal and new shirt and overall just something that we want to you know ask you to support us and everything that we're doing here $60 a year. It's going to carry you all the way through this entire season, next year's free agency in the draft, all the way up to next year's training camp. Uh, so please consider it and, and take some time to be able to support us here. And it would mean a lot to us. Some of the next things we want to go through are, you know, really the, the positive vibes coming out of camp. Things are looking really good. Um, unanimous across the board comments from all, all the different guys, you know, Sal Capaccio and Matt Bove on their show and, and Jenna Cottrell and, and Dan Fetz and, you know, Mike Catalano talking about just how dominant uh, Stefan Diggs has been listening on the um, the new Buffalo News uh, play, you know, uh, podcast that that Mark and, and Catherine have together. Everyone universally when we're out there watching Stefan Diggs is focused and just tearing it up. At camp, and, and that's really encouraging. You see the communication with he and, and Josh Allen. The relationship looks great. And for anyone who maybe had any concern on, hey, would there be lingering concerns from the offseason, you know, drama and, and whatever that was or wasn't, you could have had concern of, okay, is he going to be focused and ready to play his best when we come back in and, and are ready for ready for training camp? And that has been kind of confirmed with flying colors in that Stefan Diggs has been out here just playing his absolute peak level football right off the bat, ready for what looks like another monster season. Josh Allen has looked great. Gabe Davis has had fantastic rave review. So you love hearing those 
critical pieces of the offense looking great, ready to be explosive. Um, James Cook is someone that stood out to me at camp and that even some of the pieces from Damian Harris looking pretty quick and capable in the out of the backfield. I, I don't know. I kind of expected a little bit more of a plotting player and more of a power back. He looks quicker and more explosive than what I expected. And James Cook looks even quicker and even more explosive than him. He he looks really dynamic. He looks really explosive. Um, I think there's a chance there could be a pretty fun season from James Cook. I, I don't know how the usage is going to work out. I think Latavius Murray is going to have a role. I know Damian Harris is going to have a role. And I think James Cook is going to be the lead back out of those. And I don't know what that's going to equate to. I'm really curious. I'm, I'm curious to see the usage. We've seen a lot of focus on the screen game. I love to see that. We've seen a lot of focus on pre-snap motion, all kinds of different movement all over the place. And I love that we're seeing Ken Dorsey's second season here and a chance to have the offseason for lessons learned and to figure out what things work and don't work. And, you know, we're never going to know how much of last season's play calls were having to protect Josh Allen from himself with that UCL injury, knowing what he couldn't do short in, in intermediate and having to push the ball deeper versus – maybe what Ken Dorsey could have done better. We're, we're never going to know how much of that was between that that pie. We know the result wasn't good enough, and we know the the plays that Ken Dorsey did call were effective. We, we still scored points. We still won 13 games, but weren't as dynamic as they were early in the season. So now we're going to learn how much of that was the rest of the league catching up to Ken Dorsey, how much of that was Josh Allen's injury, and where does it fall in between, and how is he ready to now show his counter and pivot back to what this offense is capable of? All that said, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, James Cook, the drumbeat of positive news, the you know pretty positive uh, comments on the offense and the movement and what we were hoping to see from Ken Dorsey, all pale in comparison to what has been the biggest story of training camp so far, and that's Dalton Kincaid. Um, Dalton Kincaid, the cover one staff, has had repeatedly had to kind of temper our excitement and like kind of keep everybody at bay that, hey, you know, don't get too excited. It's either without pads or it's only training camp. And he just keeps over and over and over again getting people excited, whether it's, you know, incredibly difficult contested catches that he keeps coming down with over and over one-handed catches catching everything smoothly snatching it out of the air using his hands tucking it into his body um the route running you know eric and i in our one training camp day review i talked about you know i i struggled a little bit in wanting to explain to you guys when you hear all these people call him smooth what does that mean what does smooth mean and for me, it was Eric and I were watching and we're counting, he's counting steps going into the stem. And, you know, you're going up to the top of the route and you don't know at that point, is he going to, you know, an in-breaking route, break for an out-breaking route, a, a slant, a post, whatever it might be. Going up to that point, everybody else you see kind of break down and they take a couple other, a couple little gather steps and then cut the direction they're going to go. Even some guys like a Cole Beasley is excellent at his route running he'll do that kind of violent like step into the ground and cut hard the other way and you see that explosion be how he pulls away from defenders with Dalton Kincaid we kept watching and he would all in one motion never put down an extra step never never need to regain balance never have like a little pitter patter gather step at the top of the stem he would know in his mind where he was going he would throw in sometimes some head fakes and some shoulder fakes, uh, you know, kind of getting the defender to look the wrong direction. But without needing to put an extra foot down, his feet would go one, two, three, four, five, and his sixth step was into the next part of the route. It wasn't another, you know, foot there at the top where he would then turn and then cut. He was already into the next part of his route. And that's what smooth means to me where hey we didn't see him have to take a bunch of inefficient extra steps we didn't see him have to prepare to cut we didn't see him have to you know use crazy 
uh, footwork to to fake out the defender. And you think about like some famous basketball players, like you know guys like Allen Iverson, Jamal Crawford, even like the and one video guys. A lot of it isn't just obviously there's an incredible amount of physical skill, but it's understanding your defender and where is their weight shifting, where are they, you know leaning where's the leverage in that situation and how can you get them to commit just a little bit and then you cut the other way without needing to use any extra steps and when you're cutting the other way all within your planned number of steps you're already now a step or two ahead of them and when you're an athlete like Dalton Kincaid who moves really well at 6'4 250 you're already open in the NFL. That's wide open. That's, that's plenty of space. And that's what you see over and over and over again. And then having, you know, Velcro hands and pulling the ball in him constantly being out there. You know, we talked before that the, the amount of 12 personnel usage was a little sneaky. You're going to see a ton of people just look at the raw numbers and tell you that the bills had the least in the NFL and that, yeah, when Reggie Gilliam was on the field, they called it 21, and we had above average 21 usage. Well, Reggie Gilliam was out there playing tight end. Um, I, I showed plenty of pictures, and I, obviously we didn't share any video because we, we follow the rules of what's posted at training camp. Um, but it, lots of stuff that I showed pictures of Reggie Gilliam working out with the tight ends. I never saw him once working out with the running backs. He was always with the tight ends, doing individual drills, working on route running, working on blocking, because Reggie Gilliam is – a pseudo tight end. And when we need a fullback, he does play it, but he's there in that spot. Now we have Dalton Kincaid and we have a weapon that's going to be out there. And now, you know, to our eyes, there were days where more than half of the personnel usage was 12 personnel on red zone days. It was like 70%. Almost the entire time you had two tight ends on the field. Um, on third down, it was way more than 50%. And overall it was just about half. So, I had tried to temper some expectations that, hey, I expected us to go from one of the lower usages of tight of 12 personnel to maybe now we're average. I now expect it to be above average, and I I don't think it's going to overtake 11 personnel as our most used base offense, but I won't lie, it, it could. It, it really could go all the way to 50% usage. I don't think that's completely off the table maybe nothing gets to 50 percent, and that you know both 11 and 12 personnel are 40 percent each and then the other 20 percent is when we have 22 where you have gilliam and the two fullbacks or when we have 10 personnel and there's no tight ends and it's just uh wide receivers and a running back you know there'll, there'll be some other little usages there that combine and maybe it's 40 to 45 percent each but I think we're going to see a ton of 12 personnel. I think Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid are going to be on the field together a ton. And I think that, you know, hey, maybe some of the things is we get more updates on Spencer Brown and what his health situation is. Maybe some of that is just bolting Dawson Knox next to him and having a 12 personnel inline tight end hand in the dirt next to that right tackle where the edge rusher has to bump out one more gap or doesn't know if he's going to get a chip block or an extra down block. Um, maybe that's the safety blanket we need and this 12 personnel can help, you know, give a little bonus in protecting Josh Allen. Besides the fact that Dawson Knox can also go out for passes and continue to contribute in the way that we've seen. So I, I, I want to calm everybody down. I want to tell everybody, you know, take it with a grain of salt. We haven't even seen a preseason game yet. He's only had pads on for two or three practices I can't lie, guys. The hype is real. Um, I'm as excited about a rookie with Dalton Kincaid as I can remember for anyone like non-Josh Allen. Um, the reports that we heard right off the bat from Tredavious White when we drafted him of how good he looked immediately, it's that kind of stuff that I, I think we're going to see a really good player who contributes to this offense immediately and – I'm not going to stop you. I think you guys should get excited. So let's see where that goes. Uh, one more update that we're very excited to share here is Aaron and I have come to an agreement with a new uh, sponsor for this season for both our preview show and our post game show. Um, for our post game show, we are very excited to welcome back the guys at West Her. Uh, a quick shout out to Bradley Gelber, who is the social media manager over there at Team West Her. 
Uh, Bradley's been a huge supporter of us for several seasons now. Uh, we couldn't be happier to be re-upping with them again for another season. Uh, you're going to be hearing about the West Herd drive of the game uh, in every post-game show, and we couldn't be happier to partner with them again this season. Um, so shout out to everybody over at West Herd, and, and, and a special shout out to Bradley, who's been a huge supporter of us. We appreciate him greatly. The new one that will be here for every uh preview show all season including this week's show and, and and next week and going forward is leftern you guys know them as one of the most amazing design studios within uh the buffalo area bringing 17 different uh artists to each game poster that goes out there some of my favorite designs over the years are some incredible ones uh, aaron and i both already had designs here in our offices uh from uh the studio and, and everything that they've put together uh so we couldn't be prouder we are going to be the spot where you are going to have the debut of each week's uh poster for the week on our preview show you're going to get live links there to be able to buy them they're all available only on a limited basis they only make a hundred of each and the only way to get ahead of that is to be able to go in now you can actually uh sign up for their game day series uh and get the entire season all, all together at once. They have a very limited amount of these left. They're taking pre-orders for it now. You're able to go in there, get all 17 home and away prints. You save all the shipping costs, being able to get them all in one bundle, um, so you can get them all, all in one uh, package all together. Uh, so go ahead, you can check it out. I'll have this in the show description here. But we couldn't be more excited to be able to work with the guys over at Left Turn. Uh, we've got some exciting things coming up. Maybe some live shows. Maybe some things that we're going to be able to go out there. I've heard rumors of a block party that may be coming up here. So uh, we're going to be talking about that more as we go. But Aaron and I couldn't be more excited to work with Greg and all the guys over at Left Earn and, and make sure that you're stopping out there to see them. You can see them in person. You're able to find them uh, over there, 523 Main Street in Buffalo, New York. Um, something that we're proud to be able to partner with a local company who's bringing local artists and, and creatives out to you and to be able to do fun things together. So you'll see lots more fun things there and you'll see the fresh design each week as we do our matchup show and preview show looking for looking at our fresh designs of how we're going to approach that opponent each week brought to you by leftern so appreciate it. shout out to them looking forward to their some of the final thoughts uh that we have just some names that have stuck out to me um taylor rap I, I think is going to be a movable chess piece and a part of this defense obviously he's going to be jordan poyer's primary backup he's going to be micah hyde's primary backup He's going to be Taron Johnson's primary backup. We're actually going to have a legit nickel backup that, that can come in and not have to worry about um, you know, using a special teams player or somebody else out of position. I also think he's going to be a dime linebacker. We're going to have like third and long. We're going to have Matt Milano there with Taron Johnson on one side and Taylor Rapp on the other side. Um, and he's going to be in there in those situations I think we're going to use. We saw him in special teams units all over the place. He was there as the personal protector in the uh, punt coverage units. We saw him in kickoff coverage. I think he's going to play a lot of snaps for this defense, even if he – you know, if everyone's healthy, he might not start a single game. I think he's going to be on the field a lot, and you're going to see him. And he's a player that we could see as a part of this defense going forward. So uh, I think he's going to be a fun addition. Um, that linebacker battle for a middle linebacker, it, it seems like some of the rotation has shown us that I think it's down to Terrell Dodson and Terrell Bernard. We know that Dorian Williams, um, you know, we talked about it in in after the draft that there was some processing speed. You know, I was kind of hoping there was a piece of me that felt like he had a chance to start, but they, they made it very clear he's just going to focus on outside linebacker. He's not in the running for this middle linebacker job right now. We'll see where that goes in the future. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with him. He's going to contribute on special teams, and I still think those athletic traits are going to tra translate in the future. But right now, he's not a part of it. We saw, you know, kind of a cup of coffee from Bale Inspector. I think that Bale Inspector has shown he's a lock for this roster. He's going to be on special teams, and he's going to be one of the backups that is capable of contributing on uh, at middle linebacker. But it really seems like it's down to Terrell Bernard and Terrell Dodson. Um, Dodson is kind of the heavier thumper and is going to give you that run those rundown looks. I think Terrell Bernard is is a bit more balanced. He has a little more dynamic athleticism in coverage and i don't think it's crazy to think that we could see some different guys in different sets if it's an obvious rundown short yardage goal line i don't mind terrell dodson being the guy in the game normal first and second down normal distance 
I think Terrell Bernard's going to be the starter and going to be the guy who plays the most snaps. But when it gets to third and long, I don't mind bringing in Taylor Rapp and going immediately to a, a dime look and in, in obvious passing downs. Um, I, I think it's smart to have a guy like that on the field. So right now, you know, I've kind of shifted um, obviously away from Dorian Williams. I think it's more likely that it's Terrell Bernard over Tyrell Dotson, but it seems like a two man race. Moving to cornerback two. Um, today specifically, we saw kind of rave reviews about Kair Elam. He got the majority of first team snaps, uh, had a couple really good game, uh, plays against Stefan Diggs. Um, the offense, you know, complaining that he was handsy. We've seen that over and over again. He's going to use his hands. He's going to get his hands on guys. Sauce Gardner does that a ton too. Um, sometimes you have to push that in the NFL and, and dare the, the referees to call it because you're going to be able to get away with some of it. The rules are very favored towards the offense. Um, it still feels like it's more likely that Dane Jackson is the leader for that role, but I like the momentum that Kyrie Elam's had the last couple days, specifically today on Thursday, um, getting almost all the number one reps, having some wins against Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs. That's what you want to hear. And that's what he needs to do to earn the trust of John Butler. Um, and John Butler is going to be the one, the position coaches have a huge voice in who gets these starting roles. When we talk about the offensive line, whether Osiris Torrance starts, you know, Ken Dorsey is going to have a say, Sean McDermott's going to have a say, but they're going to lean on Aaron Cromer. Aaron Cromer is going to have the biggest influence into where that goes. John Butler is the same with his defensive backs group. He's a great DB coach. We've seen what he's produced with, you know, reclamation projects like, like Josh Norman, you know, undrafted guys like Levi Wallace, what we've seen with you know, sixth and seventh round picks like Dane Jackson and Christian Benford. He's able to get the most out of guys, and he's you know been critical of Kyir Elam and what we need, and, and putting him in the right position to succeed. And I've been very openly vocal about how much I want to see him on the field and use his athleticism and his upside and, and promise to our favor. And at least the last couple of days, we're seeing that. So I, I can't ask for a lot more than that. You know, he is doing what we've asked for. He is putting himself in position uh, to be competing for it. And today was a Kyrie Elam day. So we'll take it one day at a time. I'm curious what we see in the red and blue scrimmage tomorrow, what we see in the preseason games. But right now I think it's still a slight lead from Dane Jackson, but Kyrie Elam is making it a competition. We've seen some Christian Benford mixed in there. Um, so I still think there's a very high floor. No matter who plays, we're going to have a good cornerback too they're going to be fine they're going to be adequate they're going to play some good ball i think that the highest upside is kyer elam's you know six foot six one frame his four three eight forty his athleticism really can help translate to the highest upside and, and really give us some weapons opposite uh tredavious white in the last segment i'll talk about how that could be a benefit to us but i i'm i'm not sold that it's done and that Dane Jackson has won this job. I think Kyrie Elam is is in it, and I think Christian Benford will will have a voice to be heard in that room too. So we'll see where it goes. I like what we've heard, and I'm happy to see that Kyrie Elam is getting a shot at this. But right now, I don't think he's overtaken Dane Jackson just yet. Uh, and our last segment is the consistent drumbeat of how good the defensive line has looked, and the seeing guys how how much bigger and how much more healthy weight Gregory Rousseau is carrying on his massive frame, how long and explosive that Leonard Floyd looks Ed Oliver is blowing up days and just unable to be blocked and controlled. And, and I like to hear that. Um, Daquan Jones, you know, his normal, powerful self, Puna Ford looking good, Re positive reviews for Tim Settle, um, Shaq Lawson getting positive reviews, movement from AJ Epinesa. Um, I won't lie, I haven't heard a lot about Boogie Basham, um, so I'm not shocked there. I do think he's right now on the outside looking in for that group and maybe one of those cut-down day trade candidates, but he has a chance to to impact that. But I love the depth we've had there. We've heard really good reviews on Von Miller. You know, guys like, um, you know, Banged Up Bills and, and, and what Kyle brings to us there, talking about it's a – uh, an outside chance that he could play week one. We still think it's more likely that the team's going to be conservative, get a free extra roster spot by keeping Vaughn out for the first four games, 
week five, they go to London. You know, you're obviously not going to have a recovering guy flying overseas. I think that's smart to keep him home. So right now, I'd place a decent amount of money that we see um, Von Miller out there week six for that first game. And I think that that's where I expect to be able to see him in his debut. We'll see if that plays out. But, you know, week six, it's Sunday night football. It's against the Jets It's or against the Giants bringing – you know, Brian Dable back home uh, and, and facing off with them on Sunday Night Football. I think that'd be a fun way to bring uh, Von Miller back into the fold. That's where I'd put my chips right now. But I love the way this defensive line looks. I think they're going to be a problem when we get Von Miller back. And, you know, you talk about who that battle is for cornerback, too. It's a lot easier on that, you know, third and eight on a critical down where it's going to be Von Miller. Ed Oliver, Gregory Rousseau kicked into defensive tackle, and then Leonard Floyd on the outside, and those four going after a quarterback, that is going to be a dynamic, dynamic pass rush. Um, and something we haven't seen since the cold front days with those Jim Schwartz defenses. Um, I think this could be really, really exciting. I think that they're going to be able to do a lot this year, and I think we could see some of the best pass rush we've seen uh, on any of the Sean McDermott, you know, defenses here that have been very focused on coverage and finding creative ways to go forward. I think the mix of that defensive line with a little more aggression from Sean McDermott calling blitzes, um, more creative throwing the the kitchen sink at teams on third down and being able to mix it up on those rushes, simulated pressures where you don't know which four guys are coming or outright blitzes where you might have a little extra pressure coming. I think it could be a fun mix for that defense. Uh, so overall, appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate you, everybody in the chat here listening. Uh, we're going to be bringing you more of these until we get back into our normal routine. I've got one more week until I get Aaron back and be able to enjoy him being a part of the show again. Um, but make sure you're checking out everything we have going on at Cover One. Um, all the different shows across YouTube tomorrow night on Friday night. I'm going to have a panel up on the Greg Thompson Sports Show that we're going to be going through our NFL storylines and picking out the things that we're watching going into the season. So make sure you check it out. I have some really exciting guests that are coming on with me there. Um, but without further ado, again, thank you to everybody who's been supporting us. Make sure you're giving us a chance to sign up on One Pass. Shout out to our new sponsor at Left Earn and another great season together with West Her. But on behalf of everybody at Cover One, you've been listening to Greg Thompson, and we are out.